When setting up your system, your system databases are located in folders also known as endpoints. When these folders are created, they are assigned a default currency. These folders are the highest level and a single folder can contain one or multiple companies. When a company is created, the default currency pulls from the folder, but it can be changed and can differ from the folder currency. And each company created can have one or multiple sites. Sites. When setting up your company, you must create at least one site. A site can represent various locations, warehouses, offices, etc. And at least one site needs to be set as a financial site to allow financial reporting and tracking for the company. Let's take a look at adding a company and a site to your system. To add a company to your system, select the Companies function under the Setup menu. To add a new company, click New, and then enter a company code. You can give it a description and a short description if you'd like. You want to make sure the legal company is checked so you can enter financial transactions against this company. Come down and select your legislation. And then make sure you set your country. If you'd like to enter in any type of tax information, you can go ahead and do so here. And then you can also drag your logo or import your logo into the logo box. On the Accounting tab, you want to make sure you select your Account Core Model. This is what defines the ledgers and the accounts that are going to be used. Then you're going to enter in your first fiscal year. Once this year has been entered, it cannot be changed, and you want this year to represent the first year of data that you want to record in your system. I'm going to make mine for 2014. And then I want to put in my accounting currency and then a default accounting code. Your dimension types will default in. They are actually going to pull in from the ledgers that have been defined in your account core model. If they are required, you want to make sure you come over and select mandatory, which means when you enter in transactions, that value will have to be entered in for those particular dimensions. On the address tab, you'll enter in the address of the company. You have to give it a code first, and then you can come over and enter in the address. If you want to enter in telephone information or email information, they can be at the bottom of the screen. The Bank ID and Number tab will be used if you're going to be doing electronic information, electronic banking, and you want to go ahead and enter that information in, you can do so here. The Contacts tab can be entered in if you want to add in a contact for your company. I'm going to pull mine from the Contacts database. The Other tab is where I can enter in 1099 information, tax information, and declaration information. And then my Sites tab, as I add sites to this company, they will display in this tab. Once I have all of my information entered in, I go ahead and click Create. And this adds my company. To add a site, I'll select the Sites function from the Setup menu. I'll click New. I'll give it a site code, and then I can give it a description. On a general tab, if I want, I can enter a short description, but I do have to associate it back with a legal company. I'll select my training company, enter in my country, 
and then I can put in a site tax ID or an SIC code. On the accounting tab, if I want to be able to enter financial transactions for the site, I must check financial site and then define an accounting code. My dimensions will pull in from the account core model ledger that is pulled in from the company that I am associated with. On the address tab, if the site has a different address than my company, I can go ahead and enter that in here. Mine happens to be the same. The Bank ID tab will be where I can enter in any electronic banking information about this site. My Contacts tab, I can enter in my contact information. Once again, I'll pull one from my Contacts database. My Details tab, if I'm going to track 1099s, I want to select DAS2. If the site is going to be used for manufacturing, I would need to check Manufacturing. If I would like to make purchases and use the purchase module, I would select purchase. If I would like to use the sales module and um, have sales from the site, I would click sales. And if I want to do inventory with this site, I would check stock. Here I can enter in the default workdays. On my DAS tab, I can enter in 1099 information. And on my warehouse tab, if I'm going to do warehouse management, I can check it here and enter my warehouse information. Once I have all my information entered in about my site, I click Create. And this adds my site. And then if I come to my training company, you can see my training site. In this lesson, you have learned how to create a company and assign a legislation that can be the same or different than the folder legislation, how to create one or more sites and associate them back to a company and determine if the site is going to be a financial site allowing for financial reporting and tracking, or is the site going to be used to track stock movements only.